This movie should be high on most people's lists of great 80 slashers. Yeah, and it's really not, actually. Yeah. It's really forgotten. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking the last two bottles of Caprini Green Smoked Porter. <laughs> nice. You're all looking in the mirror after, you're like, oh, my beard. Yeah. You all get attacked by the candy man. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you 1989's Intruder. A very underrated slasher. That's right. Intruder is directed by Scott Spiegel and he actually co-wrote Evil Dead 2 with Sam Raimi. He's from that whole camp of guys, right? Yeah. He's that, that part of that Sam Raimi camp where he's buddies <laughs> with all those guys. He also co-wrote the screenplay for The Rookie, the 1990 movie with Clint Eastwood and Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Love that fucking movie. He's produced a lot of movies, but he's directed From Dust Till Dawn 2. <laughs> Oh yeah, straight to video, baby. <laughs> and Hostel 3. Dan Hicks is in this, and he's from Evil Dead 2. Bobby Joe! Where are you, girl? <laughs> <laughs> 45. 100 buck. Sam and Ted Raimi are in this, as well as Bruce Campbell. For two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Intruder Starts, we're introduced to our cast of characters here, all working at a supermarket together. They're closing up for the night, trying to usher out the last bunch of customers. Yeah, that old man. That old man. <laughs> Am I in the middle of something here? And then he drops all his shit. Yeah. Like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> They're just about to close up, and one of the girls, Jennifer, her ex-boyfriend shows up and starts harassing her. And they end up getting in this big fight, then all the other co-workers get in on it, and they're all trying to throw this guy out, and he's like fending them off, he's doing a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, he's all throwing everybody into those display yeah, cases. And and Sam Raimi goes <laughs> yeah. in all that display, beating them up, and like... <laughs> yeah. They finally usher him out and all the commotion is settled. The two owners of the supermarket hold a little staff meeting and they break the bad news that they're going to be selling the store and shortly all of you guys will be out of jobs. So they're all kind of sad, you know, they all like the place and you know, a lot of them have worked there for a long time. Go back to work for their overnight shift, restocking and repricing everything at 50% off. <laughs> yeah. Two owners are up in the office talking and kind of get the impression that one guy, Bill, is not too happy about this sale. He doesn't really yeah. actually want it to go down. And the other guy is like, ah, whatever, just sign the papers, get it over with. Yeah. Let's get this done with and get the money. We see a POV shot of somebody looking for a way to get into the supermarket. Craig keeps calling too in the meantime and he keeps making threats and harassing Jennifer. I don't know why they keep everybody. answering the damn phone. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, it's after hours too. It's like, yeah. you don't need to answer it. Linda leaves the store to go home and when she opens up her car, there's a knife there just ding, stabs her. So there's the first kill of the whole movie. Bill hears some stuff outside and he figures that it's Craig kind of hunting around. He goes outside with a hammer He's to take care of business one last time, I guess. He runs into Craig and they get into it and he ends up getting knocked out by Craig. With the hammer, yeah, right with the, to the hammer. Head. Somebody gets into the store and starts knocking the employees off one by one. And quite brutally, too, I might add. And quickly. <laughs> yeah. And that's where we're going to end the plot. So if you want to keep watching and see what happens with all the employees, keep watching 1989's Intruder. But why should you watch Intruder? <laughs> we're going to give you all the reasons why right now, because it's a pretty damn awesome slasher. That's right. One of the best things about this movie, and it's glaring, is the setting, right? The supermarket itself. It's an awesome place to have a horror movie. You've got all of these little nooks and crannies where somebody could be hiding. You've got these different rooms, different areas, yeah. the meat department. Yeah, the meat lockers. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the attic too, the attic space with all that cool like Halloween stuff and everything. All the Halloween and Christmas decorations. Yeah, it's and, cool. And then the downstairs area where you have to yeah. go down those rollers to get <laughs> yeah. down. And, like a lot of really neat areas. Supermarket is almost a character in itself, right? Yes. And all these little rooms are almost little characters too. They got little quirks about them. Yeah, it's great. It's Every movie should be like that, I think. Every mm -hmm. movie, the setting should be 
the other character. That's that right. One extra character is the setting, and this movie nails that. I like too how they're isolated. You don't know exactly where they are, but you assume that it's this small dinky town, right? Yeah. So after hours, it's like nobody's coming around. You also feel like they're in the middle of nowhere because you look out. They show like a lot of shots from the inside looking out, and you see just darkness. Just blackness, yeah. <laughs> darkness! Darkness! <laughs> darkness is spreading! Fuck your couch! <laughs> yeah, so it really gives you that sense of foreboding and that where are these characters gonna go, right? They need to stay in the store because the store is like salvation almost, yeah. right? Yeah, you do really get that sense of isolation, and it really does feel like this store is plopped literally in the middle of nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like there's nothing around. The characters in this movie are really good too, and there's a lot of them, so it's kind of actually hard to keep track of them all. There are some really memorable characters, like both Sam and Ted Raimi are very <laughs> good in this. Funny and quirky. Ted Raimi always has his headphones <laughs> and his Walkman on. He never knows. He's completely oblivious to everything. <laughs> he's all listening to that shitty song. <laughs> like even when they all get fired, he's not. He's completely oblivious. <laughs> yeah. Guy walks by. Hey, you lost your job. He's still working. Yeah. <laughs> Cutting up that watermelon. Like who cuts up a watermelon like that? He's all digging, like <laughs> just destroying yeah. it. <laughs> You're gonna put that on the shelf? Like, <laughs> one character always talks like this all the time. Right. It's like, what's this guy's problem? But you realize, ah, that's, he's just playing a character. And yeah. He's, just, he's doing that for the sake of being campy. That's know? right, yeah. It's forgivable, yeah. right, with the sort of movie that it yeah. is. The camera work in this movie really sets it apart from a lot of other slashers. Oh, yeah. There are some great, very interesting, original camera work and shots happening throughout the whole movie start to finish you yeah. know a lot of pov like even the pov of the shopping cart mm -hmm. and everything like when do you see the pov of a shopping cart yeah that's right yeah <laughs> it doesn't have eyes <laughs> yeah you know? but it all helps to put you there right yeah. it, it makes you feel like you're part of the action a lot of cool overhead shots where you see like the whole scope of the supermarket yeah how big it really is and yeah. like where these people have to run to to yeah. get away from things. A really interesting cool shot where one of the owners is up in his office and he's having a drink and the glass is in front of the camera, right? Picks it up, takes a drink, then puts the glass back and then your vision's obscured by the glass and you see him get killed but you can't see the killer because the glass is obscuring your vision. It's a really yeah. neat way to to keep the, the killer a mystery. All the little subplots for the characters are neat too, the way they flesh the characters out a little bit, because it makes you care about the characters and if they're gonna get killed or not, right? Yeah. That's major to a horror movie. Jennifer and her asshole boyfriend, you have the subplot with the two owners, mm -hmm. kind of a little butting heads about the sale of the whole thing. He owns 51%, I own 49%. Oh, and there's a little love interest yeah. happening between two of the characters, which is another kind of subplot. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of other things happening besides just the killing. That's right, yeah. And then the cops show up too, and they don't do anything. They're all, <laughs> use it. They're all yeah. old, they're like 80 years old. Yeah, they're like, all what are you, bumbling. What are you gonna do? <laughs> it took five straps young men to take care of this Craig guy yeah. and these two old cops, what are you gonna do? And the humor is really good in this movie too, right? Like it's mm. intentionally funny in the right places. That's right, yeah. yeah. And a lot of it's dialogue driven too, but a lot of it, the settings help, right? There's things that they're doing that's funny yeah. as well. And the kills for this movie, they're awesome. Absolutely awesome. There's that compressor elevator type thing or whatever the hell it is where the killer puts one of the victims heads halfway in and starts to lower yeah. the platform down and crushes his head. Half of his <laughs> Half, head? Yeah. Oh, it looks so good. It doesn't look cheesy. It looks spectacular. Oh. It reminds me a lot of two other kills. Um, the Fly 2, security guard gets his head crushed in the elevator. And Toxic Avenger when he kills a guy with the weights. Oh yeah, that's right. Kind of the same idea. <laughs> but this is really good. You know? <laughs> yeah. On a low budget. There's a bandsaw kill too, which is even better. Oh yeah. Like they show more of it and it's like the teeth and all that getting all ground up. It's like, ugh, yeah. you'll feel it. it puts like, the guy's head like vertically <laughs> through the bandsaw. Like, <laughs> just 
Oh, it looks so good. <laughs> I like how the killer, too, he's all strong. Super strong. Like, yeah, he can just lift these people up with one hand and yeah. everything. The kill in the beer cooler is really good where he stabs the guy and it goes through him into all the beer cans and yeah. then the beer starts spraying everywhere. Yeah, the generic beer. This is beer. <laughs> Slams his eye into that, that spike, that spike thing. <laughs> thing that nobody uses anymore, like a super outdated thing. Those yeah. spikes to put receipts or whatever on. Like, yeah. aren't you wrecking the paper? Like, <laughs> kind of, like numbers and stuff that might be on it. But they've all been outlawed because too many people have been killed with them. Like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, this used. movie. <laughs> The way the kills are shot are really neat too, like the way the blood splatters, like when that one guy gets killed outside of the supermarket yeah. and his blood sprays onto the outside glass and then like everything turns red on mm -hmm. the inside yeah. because of the light shining through the glass is like really stylistic. The music is really good for this movie too and it really helps to build the mood and foreboding for a movie like this. Yeah, like. that's what I thought too. And and even the just the opening credits, mm -hmm. it's just a shot of the moon yeah. with some clouds going through it and then this music and it, it sets the tone for the movie perfectly. Yeah. You kind of feel at home. Like, um, the moon and the clouds <laughs> and this music. Um, ah, this is gonna be yeah. good. Here know? we go, yeah. yeah. You're settling in. Now we're going to get into some spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen Intruder and you don't want the ending to get wrecked for you, stop, watch the movie, and come back and watch <laughs> this. There's a reveal at the end where you find out the killer actually isn't the boyfriend Craig, it's the co-owner Bill. And it's a really cool bait and switch, because yeah. you're not expecting it to be Bill whatsoever. You think he's dead, actually. And his motive is hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he doesn't want the store to close. Yeah, the store's my life. I love this store. <laughs> it's like, so why do you have to kill all of us? Well, I can't let you stop me. <laughs> what? Kind of like uh, the way we felt when uh, the movie stores closed. I can't let you close the store. Yeah. <laughs> I love this store. And then the final showdown between Bill and the final girl is 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 epic it's, yeah it, it goes throughout the whole supermarket spills to the outside get a really good payoff the ending also reveals how <laughs> i guess how silly the killer is for his motives yeah but also how twisted and deranged he is too because yeah. like that head scene he tells that story with the ham sandwich in the head early on yeah. and then he's actually doing that later eating the sandwich yeah and then he starts beating the guy <laughs> yeah. with the with the severed head like <laughs> yeah. and watching this a second time knowing that bill is the killer yeah it's really cool to see how they hide the fact that Bill's a killer. Now that you know, watching a second time, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, they did a really good job of like not cluing you in whatsoever and, and really fooling you to think that Craig is the killer. That's they right. They did a really good job with that. They didn't cram that down your throat. They just kind of had it sort of nonchalantly. Yeah. And you wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't Craig, but you are surprised that it is Bill. And even at the end end, the killer still gets a one-up on everybody else, <laughs> even though he's dead. Mm -hmm. Because just before he dies, like, it was damn officer. Yeah. They killed everyone in the supermarket, and then he dies. <laughs> and, then he died. and then they arrest them, the, the, the final girl and Craig. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. he still, he still kind of wins. <laughs> the cool thing about Intruder is it's kind of half cliche and half very original. Mm -hmm. So that the cliche parts really feel familiar to you, but the originality makes it stand out amongst a lot of other really shitty slashers. <laughs> That's right, yeah. You know, this 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 movie should be high on most people's lists of great 80s slashers. Yeah, and it's really not, actually. Yeah. It's really forgotten in terms of that. And it is better than most higher-end slashers or more familiar slashers like Friday the 13th. Yeah, I think this is a way better slasher than oh, Friday the 13th. A million times better. It's like, more enjoyable, that's for sure. It's yeah. a fun watch. It's the, the original Friday the 13th is actually boring. Yeah. It kind of feels like it goes nowhere. Tell me if I'm wrong. If you can think of a better one, let me know. But I think that this might be the last great slasher of the 80s. Yeah. This came out in 89. 
the 90s are about to happen. Slasher genre is pretty much going to be dead now until Scream comes out. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the last great slasher before Scream revived it. Yeah. It's an end of an era. This, this movie kind of stamps an end mm -hmm. of the 80s slasher era, you know? That's right, yeah, because then after this, then you start getting into different effects, too, and then computers start to take yeah. over, and it just doesn't have the same feel. Yeah. So if you want a really good, fun slasher that's in the vein of the Evil Dead movies, because it's done by those guys, that whole crew of guys. You yeah. know, it's got Ted Raimi and it's Sam Raimi, Bruce Campbell, it's directed by the co-writer of Evil Dead 2. How can you go wrong? Yeah, and you you can't and you don't. Yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't checked it out and you're a slasher fan or just a fan of fun, campy movies, definitely check out Intruder. It won't disappoint. No, not at all. And until next time, keep drinking. I can't let you finish this beer. <laughs> I love this beer. <laughs>